All right, welcome back. This is day three of Mystery Island BBS 2020. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have been here for Monday and Tuesday? And now we're at the mid part on Wednesday. Thank you for joining in. And let's get started right with the lesson. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And we can see on the poster, go ahead and turn, look at the poster now. King Uzziah died, God is blank. What word goes in there? Let's read this together. It's base one. And try to figure out what the missing word is. Did you get it? The missing word is alive. King Uzziah died, and God is alive. And go ahead and write that in. So who was King Uzziah? He was a famous king of God's chosen people. He had ruled the people well, very good, for 52 years. Imagine that, 52 years. But the time came when he died, and we just read that verse. So since it says King Uzziah died, let's draw him in his bed and have him died like this. So he's, there he is, drawing a picture with him laying in the bed and he's, he's dead. But God is alive. You know, human beings, we all will stop breathing. We all will die eventually. All, human king, all humans die. It doesn't matter how famous you are, they all die. If we're good kings who rule well, they die. And if they're kings who are wicked, they die. Every human king's reign eventually ends. But God doesn't die. Aren't you glad about that? God is eternal. He lasts forever. He has no beginning and he has, will have no end. So he never stops being king of everything. Now let's say that first rhyme again because I want you to remember it. Looking at the picture, as we do, King Uzziah died, but God is alive. Did you get that? Okay, let's do number two. Looked heavenward, throne of the blank. So the answer is, did you get it? Is the Lord. So let's read that together. Looked heavenward, throne of the Lord. Kind of rhymes together, don't it? So in the vision that Uzziah was given by God, he looked heavenward, up to heaven, and guess what he saw? He saw a throne. But not just any throne. Let me read what it says in Uzziah. We're going to read verse 1 of chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. Now this draw a throne. Kings and people who rule sit on thrones, don't they? So for instance, let's look at some pictures of thrones of kings. You see in this poster here, some pictures of the king's thrones are on this poster, but God's throne was super special. It was the greatest throne ever. And it was high and lifted up. He sits on his throne and nothing can stop what he has already planned. Now let's say the Ron pictures together. Look at the picture of the throne on the, on the poster that we have here. And ready? Let's say the first one and then we'll say the second one for, so we can learn it. The first one was, King Uzziah died, God is alive. The second one was, look heavenward, throne of the Lord. This will help you remember this part of scripture that we're talking about in Isaiah chapter 6. And let's go to number 3. Temple with robe could fill the, what's the blank? The next thing that King that Isaiah saw will blow you away. Let's say our third rhyme and try to figure out the missing word. Temple with robe could fill the what? The answer is globe, a big globe, the world. 
Let's write that in this base. That's incredible because years ago, a king's robe showed how important he was. The longer the robe, the more important the king. Now let's look at some pictures of king's robes. Look at this poster here, the robes poster. And you can see what kings actually wore as their robes. Now let's read about how long God's robe was. In Isaiah 6, 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Yes, that's right. It filled the whole temple. Now let's draw a rope. Now imagine if a king were here in this building, right where I'm at, with the robe on, and it filled the entire building, not just the front part or down the stairs, but over the entire building. This shows that God is important in a different way than anyone else. He's a ruler in a category all his own. His robe could have filled the whole globe if he wanted to. He is God. He is great, he is almighty, and he is the ruler of all. He can do whatever he wants. He doesn't answer to anybody. He is in charge. And that big word means that God is in charge and is ruler of everything, and that word is sovereign. Now let's look at the sovereign. Did you see a smaller word at the end of that word? Sovereign, you break it down. At the end of that word, you see reign. R-E-I-G-N. And yes, countries that have kings as their leaders sometimes call them their sovereign because they reign or rule over that country. But God is sovereign like none other. He reigns over everyone and everything. And the great news is that he's not just a powerful king, but he's good. He's real good. Can you imagine if he was powerful but not good? Wouldn't it be scary to have a powerful God who could do anything, but who wasn't good? But God is good. He's perfect goodness. It also wouldn't be great to have a king who was good, but not powerful. So aren't you glad that we have a God that is both of those? He's both all-powerful ruler, and he's a good ruler. Perfect. Now, let's, let's say all three of them together again. King Uzziah died. God is, remember that, a lot. And number two, looked heavenward, the throne of the Lord. And then number three, temple with robe could fill the globe. Very good. Okay, let's go on to the fourth one. Let's see if we can figure out the missing word here. Okay, and seraphim fly covered their blank. The answer is eyes. Okay, okay, and let's read that together again. Seraphim fly covered their eyes. Now you may be saying to yourself, what is a seraphim? What are they? And that's a good question. Seraphim are a type of angel. They're only mentioned here also, nowhere else in the Bible. Seraphim. Nobody on the earth but Isaiah really knows what they look like, but we'll use our imaginations that God gave us based on the description that's here in the Bible, realizing they would have been much more majestic and much more incredible than our drawing could ever show here, or that we could imagine in our mind. Now let's say the whole rhyme together from the beginning. Ready? King Uzziah died. God is alive. Looked heavenward, throne of the Lord. And number three, temple with robe could fill the globe. Then number four, seraphim fly covered their eyes. And then number five, holy was heard Super important blank. What was that? So Isaiah has been seeing some amazing things. But now he's going to hear some amazing things. 
And what do you think that word is that goes in that blank? Holy was heard, super important word, word. Let's write that word holy three times. What do you think the word holy means? It means to be set apart. God is set apart. He's not like anyone else. He's in a category all by himself. He's pure and perfect. Never doing or thinking anything wrong. God is everything good and nothing bad. Isn't that incredible? There's not one bad thing at all in God. It's impossible for him to think even one bad thought ever. He's all good things and perfect and pure and he's the source of every single good thing ever. Every good thing you've ever experienced, every mouthful of food, Every good thing you've ever experienced, every good night of sleep in a warm bed, every person who loves you is from God. All good things come from God. Now regarding God's holiness, this is the only time in the Bible an attribute of God is repeated not once, twice, but three times. Three times in a row. This repetition lets us know just how important it is to realize that God is holy. 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 This is repeated again in Revelation 4, 8, later on at the, near the end of the Bible. And interestingly enough, the Bible also commands us to be holy, as God is holy. Of course, we can never be perfectly holy like God, not even close. We each sin, and even one sin means that we are not holy at all. God wants us to live pure lives that reflect Him well. We can only do this if we are children of God because we need Him to help us. We can't become truly holy on our own. We need help because we are lost. And if you're sitting there listening to this right now, realize that we are sinners. We're separated from God and God is holy. There's only one way to come to know God. Because God is love, He sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins and shed His blood so that we can partake of the gift of eternal life. And I trust and hope and pray that you would do that if you have not realized you're a child of God yet. And let's go and read verse 2. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And then look at verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now let's go on to the last one. Number 6. Tell your story about God's blank. What's the word? The glory. Tell your story about God's glory. And let's read verses 6, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3 and 4 again. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Just a, we learned the word about holy. It's a big word that means glory. Here's another big word, glory. What do you think it means? The glory of God shows the great and how almighty he is. The whole earth shouts out the greatness and fame of God. That doesn't mean it's actually shouting now, but that God's amazing this is on display. The waterfalls show his powerful glory. The sunrise shows his power, beautiful glory. And the birds singing in the trees show us his creative glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. This means that every single thing that God has created shows us God's glory in some way. 
For example, have you ever looked up at the sky at night and been amazed to see all the stars? In Psalm 8, verses 1, 3, and 4, have you ever stood by the ocean so huge and so beautiful and so calm? Or ever watched an amazing little critter? Or marveled at an animal at a zoo? Or watched a snowflake fall? Probably not here in San Diego. Or thought about how amazing it is that Jesus himself came to earth and died on the cross for our sins. All of these things and so many much, much more show God's glory. Even you were created to bring God's glory. In fact, that's the whole point of why you're here. Why we are all here. He made you to bring him glory and to enjoy him forever. I'm trying to think of something that shows God's glory. Break. Okay, and now we're going to go to how we can praise God. Responses that bring praise to God. Show God honor. This means you should have a deep respect for God and value Him greatly. As the ruler, God knows the very best way for us to live. He shows us how to live in the Bible. You show Him how special and amazing you think He is by how you live your life and how much you obey Him, how much you talk about Him, and how you think about Him. Think this question, how can I honor God today? And number two, sing songs, sing praises. The Bible commands us to sing praises to the Lord, such as in Psalm 92, Psalm 95, and Psalm 96. It's a way to help us remember who He is and what He's done. So singing songs to Him is a great response. Think about this. What songs of praise can I sing to God today? And number three, pray praises. It's also important to pray to God and, and praise Him. Praising means to tell God how amazing He is. Start your prayers with praises rather than requests. You can begin your prayers by telling God, Dear Heavenly Father, I know you are great and you are almighty. I know you are good and I know you're holy. What do you think is amazing about him? What can you thank him for? He wants to hear it. And it's good to remind yourself of the, of the amazing God you are serving. A great way to do this is to pray psalms to God, such as Psalm 145, Psalm 8, Psalm 93, Psalm 98, Psalm 111, Psalm 115. The Bible is filled with praises to God. And and a lot of them right there in Psalms that you can read in the center of your Bible. What can you praise God for today? And then number four, tell wonders. Another response when faced with God's greatness is you want to tell others about God. The people outside that are not listening right now, ones that you know, they may need to know about God. And you can tell them. What's he like and what's he's done? If you see a beautiful sunset, say, God sure did make a beautiful sunset today. And if you see a rainbow, God is the one who thought up the rainbows. How beautiful it is to see a rainbow after a rain. If God has answered a prayer, whether it's big or whether it's small, tell others of his kindness to you, how God answered your prayer. Look for his wonders. They aren't too hard to spot. God is great. 